Hello, my name is Miss Torres and I'm Miss McFadden and today we are going to rethink misconceptions about ecosystems. So um, there were times in my life where I thought I could say I knew everything about a certain subject and then I gained some new information and found out that what I thought about that subject was completely wrong. It's okay to not know or understand everything about a subject because it just means you have an opportunity to learn new information. Today, we are going to teach you how to rethink misconceptions of using information about ecosystems to see what you know about the subject. And what is some new information you learned by reading an informative article about the subject? All right, now before we read the article on ecosystems, you as, a, you as an individual with your partner are gonna come up with four questions that you would like clarification for that you don't know 100%. And then after we read, we're going to figure out the, the correct answer with more information with the new learning that you did. So I'm going to uh, share with you some of the questions that we had done with the previous class before this one. And one of the questions we had come up with them was, what is an ecosystem? Okay, and another question that we did was how big are ecosystems? Okay, so in this section I'm going to write what I think based on the knowledge that I have before reading the article on what an ecosystem is. So my answer to that question is an ecosystem is an area where animals live. All right, and for our second question, how big are ecosystems? Now when I think how big of an ecosystem is, I just think it's as big as we can imagine. Now this is what I think, but you should have come up with four questions with your partner that you would want. They can be similar to these or as different, but they're what you came up with. And to give you an example is, this is a student example of one that we had done with the previous class. And they had done their four questions on like, what is an ecosystem? How big is an ecosystem? What do ecosystems do for humans? And what are some things humans can do for ecosystems? And then they wrote what they had thought their answer was based on the previous knowledge before they read the article. Now, again, you're gonna come up with your partner the four questions that you guys would want more information about, and you're gonna write based on the knowledge you had before you read the article on what you think the answer to the question is. Now we're gonna read the article and we're gonna fill out our chart. Okay, so now let's read the article we have selected for today's lesson. Information for kids about ecosystems. People who study ecosystems are called ecologists. Anyone interested in how animals and plants interact with each other and their environment is an ecologist. Because ecosystems are very complicated, there's a lot of people who still don't know and they can be confusing to understand at first. Basic ecosystem information for kids is important to understand because people all live in ecosystems and rely on them to survive. So ecosystem definition for kids. Ecosystems are any area where living creatures such as plants and animals interact with non-living things like soil, water, temperature, and air. Ecosystems come in different sizes. An ecosystem can be as big as the entire planet or as little as a tiny bacteria you can't see that live on your skin. There are many different types of ecosystems, including Lakes, deep oceans, coral reefs, mangroves, swamps, forests, jungles, deserts, and city parks. Here are some ecosystem facts for kids. Living animals and plants interact with their non-living environment in many ways. For example, plants need soil, water, and sunshine to make their food and grow. Animals also need to cl drink clean water and breathe fresh air to survive. 
An ecosystem also includes the interactions between living creatures. For example, plants and animals eat each other to live, many animals pollinate flowers or spread their seeds to help plants reproduce, and animals may use plants or other animals to help them remove parasites. It is these types of complicated interactions that make an ecosystem. Basic grassland ecosystem example. Firstly, the grass grows by getting nutrients from the soil using sunshine and water to make food in a process called photosynthesis. A byproduct of photosynthesis is the production of oxygen. Animals breathe the oxygen, drink water, and many, like gazelles, eat the grass. Lions then hunt the gazelles to feed their pride. When an animal like the lion dies, their body breaks down back into the earth, enriching the soil. The grasses then get more nutrients to keep growing, producing oxygen and continuing the cycle. The importance of ecosystems. Ecosystems are very important to humans because they give ecosystem services, which help you live and make people's lives more enjoyable. Ecosystem services include the production of oxygen by plants for animals to breathe, availability of clean, fresh water for drinking, and the ability to grow food from healthy soils. Humans also rely on trees, rocks, and soils to build houses, cities, and walls for shelter and protection. Ecosystem services have also provided humans with vibrant cultures. Throughout history, people have been inspired to write poetry and stories about the natural world. Humans use plants to make dyes and paints to decorate clothes and buildings. Humans also use minerals and stones like diamonds, emeralds, and shells to create beautiful jewelry and accessories. Even the technology humans rely on today is an ecosystem service. The components of computers such as lithium batteries are derived from natural sources. For example, liquid crystal display LCD screens are composed of the natural resources aluminum and silicone. Silica glass, which makes up 59% of the Earth's crust, is used to make the fiber optic cables that deliver internet to your house. Caring for ecosystems. Humans can all do our part to help look after the ecosystems that give life. Two easy things people can do at home to help look out after ecosystems are recycling and carefully selecting products from companies that minimize their negative impact on the environment by not producing pollution, using pesticides, and cutting down forests. Also remember that ecosystems can be as small as your backyard. By placing plants that native animals like to feed on or live in, you can help support local ecosystems. So now that we have read the article, I am going to show you how to fill out the new learning category. If you remember correctly, Ms. McFadden earlier um, filled out the what we think we know category where you filled out with where she filled out with um, information she knew about ecosystems uh, just from the top of her head. So um, let's address the first question. What is an ecosystem? Ms. McFadden, um, using her previous knowledge about ecosystems, stated that an ecosystem is an area where animals live. But since we read the article, we have now learned that an ecosystem is any area where living creatures such as plants and animals interact with non-living things like soil, water, temperature, and air. So I'm going to so I'm going to restate this. So in the new learning, you put the information that you have just learned um, from the article that clears up the misconception you may have had from the question. So in, so you so you guys picked so the previous class had picked out this question: What is an ecosystem? Miss McFadden modeled this category by stating what she thinks she knows about how to answer this question, saying an ecosystem is an area where animals live 
And then from the information we just learned, we put any area where living creatures such as plants and animals interact with non-living things like soil, water, temperature, and air. So let's go on to the next question. How big are ecosystems? Ms. McFadden said that they are as big as we can imagine. But according to the article, an ecosystem can be as big as the entire world or as small as the bacteria on our skin. So this is a great way to compare how, um, how uh, new learning has impacted the information you used to think um, about these questions. So let's go to what the students from our previous class have done. So they had copied down what we did during modeling. So they had come up with these questions, but they copied down the answers we had come up with here. And then they did the last two on their own. So they, for, they answered these two questions. They answered, what do ecosystems do for humans? And from their previous knowledge, they said um, that ecosystems give them food, water, and natural resources to help them thrive in our society. So from the article, some new learning that they found was that ecosystems provide oxygen, clean and fresh water. Um, it helps, it gives, uh, the ability to grow foods from rich soils. There's trees, rocks, and soils can, that can be used to build houses, cities, and walls for shelter and protection. And it allows them to create culture by nature, being an inspiration for the arts and a source to make arts from. So this is what, this is the answer they got from the article as their new learning and when compared to what they used to think, obviously now they know a lot more information. Um, the next question the students had answered was, what are some he things humans do to care for ecosystems? And the students thought that um, humans reduce waste and pollution, but when they read the article, they find that yes, humans um, d uh, reduce in, um, waste and pollution by recycling and carefully selecting products from companies to minimize pollution, use of chemicals, and cutting down of trees. So now, um, just make sure that when you fill out this chart, you come up with four questions and you try to at least answer the questions with new learning um, uh, that's different than what you um, thought you used to know about ecosystem. So once you all complete your charts of the ecosystem, we want you and your partner to present in a short video your charts and email your completed work just like take a picture of it or scan it to dorismcfadden12 at gmail.com. Okay, so today what we did with our notebooks is we learned how to rethink misconceptions that we had about the ecosystem by using the chart that you created in your notebooks. I hope that you were able to learn something new about ecosystems by using the strategy. The strategy can be used, be used for different subjects. It doesn't just have to be about ecosystems. If you're, just, if you're confused about a subject that you haven't worked with before, you can use a strategy to help clear up some questions that you have. Remember, it's okay to not know everything about a subject. You're still learning how to do it. And it just gives you more opportunities to research and to get information about the subject. And it'll help you become an expert. Thank you very much for listening to our lesson. We hope to see your work soon. Thank you.